All right, welcome back. This is from the Butcher's Block here at the Ventura Meat Company in Ventura, California. Next to me is my good buddy Michael Buckley, owner operator of this shop. Oh, thank you. This is the next segment, the second segment of from the Butcher's Block, and I'm going to lead off with this little bowl of goodness right here, Michael. Pork. This is pork. This is a, a pork butt that I assume mm. our apprentice and master cutter over here, yeah, Megan, took care of earlier in the week. Maybe even yesterday? Well... Maybe even this morning. You know, I will take full responsibility for that. Ooh, and Megan, it, uh, you're on, got a stiff competition over here. Well, you know what? She was too busy helping customers. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> it takes quality staff to run a quality <laughs> establishment. Indeed it does. No, I just lopped that up into pieces about... You know, maybe five or six hours ago, um, threw it in the crock pot, uh, put some pesto in. What can I say? Pork butt is and, and pork butt is a misnomer. Pork shoulder is actually what it is. And the butt portion really came from storage techniques. That's right. Ages ago. Yeah. When the barrel that the pork shoulder was stored in was considered a butt. A butt. And when you bought wholesale pork, you were literally buying a butt of pork and um, around that same time frame Boston was a very big hub in the United States as colonial times uh, so that's where the phrase Boston butt came from excellent well I do want to use this as a jumping off point for our second segment though in our previous segment we were talking largely about the origins of the shop yeah how it came to be a physical location your philosophies on running the shop why you stock it the way you do somewhat Yes. Which is going to segue us into this segment about navigating the shop. And I want to talk about and get your perspective on when a person walks through the, the door and that little ding, ding yeah. goes off. Yeah. What do they need to know? How do they navigate through the case? What kind of <laughs> your words do they use or verbiage? Yeah. You know, how do they communicate with the butcher? Sure. And, and only you as the, the guy who owns the shop can give us the best perspective on that. Definitely. Uh, the first thing I would say is that the meat case is in the middle of the store. And that's pretty universal, right? I mean, it you is. go into a, a butcher shop, yep. 50 years old, mm -hmm. 3 years old, 100 years old, yeah. the, butcher sh the, the butcher case yeah. should be in the center. Right. I mean, where else is it going to be? We've got two entrances. Um, it's equi eh, maybe not truly equidistant between the two of them, but it's... As true as we could make it, um, y what we've done here is uh, we've turned a 1,700 square foot facility into, you know, two different uh, segments: a 900 square foot prep area and a s 800 square foot retail area slash waiting area. Um, so the the walls and and that's kind of what you see behind us here with the with the glass. That's the that's the separator between the retail area and the prep area. The prep area is where all the prep gets done, and you know customers aren't really supposed to come back here. Um, so that means we have a, a unique and all access pass for the show. Well, because we, I ultimately am a customer. Right. We may or may not be breaking the law here. I don't, I'm not <laughs> sure. I don't need a special <laughs> badge to get back here. <laughs> Maybe a I secret keyed, handshake. Hey, as long as everything's six feet off the floor, it's fine. Uh, so. Past that, uh, like I said, the meat case is in the middle, um, and, and that's the center point. That's where all of the transactions, where the commerce takes place, and um, boy, that just makes all kinds of sense to me. Now, we do have some retail items that, you know, if you do a 180, if you're looking at the case, you turn around, you see some things, you know, and this is where it gets really unique, and it comes back to that word local that we talked about. You know, you'll find things here that may not immediately make sense to you like we sell coffee what the heck is a butcher shop doing selling coffee well we sell locally produced coffee beacon coffee is not only a locally owned uh business it's also the only brand that's roasted right here in ventura but also i mean when you gravitate to that educated consumer that we were yeah. talking about previously yeah coffee especially nowadays is a really awesome and almost exquisite or fine dining kind of base component for rubs and yeah. for accentuating oh, the beef is. flavors and is. raw pork. And nothing would make... So 
the untrained eye or the uneducated consumer may think, I don't understand why coffee's here. Right. But once you step in or Megan steps right. in as an educator, now right. they know, hey, I can use coffee with other spices to really bring out flavors of my meat. And, and gosh, you know, if, some, if I knew that somebody bought that coffee, took it home and grinded it up and made a rub and put it on the pork, my heart would melt. <laughs> <laughs> it would be so incredibly awesome. And it would make John and Jen Weir's heart melt as well. Uh, so, you know, there are some items there in the retail area that, you know, may not immediately make sense in terms of why is a butcher shop selling crackers, you know, I mean, locally produced, gluten free, you know, MSG free crackers. It, it's a um, it's more of a philosophy thing than a, than a money making thing. And, and I, it comes back to what I've said before. Uh, you know, if I'm going to take on a, a revenue opportunity it's going to be something that is true to our values and and those values are you know locally produced free of uh, artificial ingredients artificial ingredients yeah that's only a thing to do if you're making big batches no right? and i want to i want to broach into some of that controversial territory that we alluded to in the past when it comes to additional products in the shop yeah you and I, this is a total lead in so it's a, a shame. softball. It's, it's, a, it's softball? a softball because you and I have had this conversation, but the listeners haven't been <laughs> privy to it and the viewers haven't been privy to it. When it comes to stocking shelves with additional products, mm. you have a, a great philosophy and ultimately not only just a local component, but you have a defining line between butcher shop yeah. and again, here comes the softball oh convenience boy. store. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yes. Am I? I'm. I'm giving you one. Well, Hit it out yeah. of the park for me. Tell me what right. that defining line is. Because we ha we're talking about crackers and coffee yeah. and honey and other things on your yeah. shelves, mm -hmm. but you don't have cereal. Right. You don't have gum nope. or candy bars. Nope. So let's let's give the so listeners a why. reason. There's a reason that convenience stores and and I remember growing up in uh, <laughs> Kingston, Tennessee. We had a store that was called the convenience store. <laughs> and it was like because it was convenient. It's like you guys. Can't come up with a better name than that. It's the easiest mm. name in the world. And I'm going to be shameful and eat my... Please do. Some of Please do. We're talking. Don't, don't stop. Um, so you go into these convenience store types place, type of places, and I'm not going to name any names or anything because shop where you want, but it's the one stop on the go. You know, I need a donut or I need a Coca-Cola or a cup of coffee or some crackers or some... Or peanut butter. Or, so even a shop, a, though, that considers them a, themselves right. a butcher shop, yeah. when they start stocking the shelves with grocery-like yeah. items, mm -hmm. that that really blurs the lines and almost eliminates them from the conversation about being a butcher shop or a meat location, right? I'm not going to be the authority on what is and is not a butcher shop. But you have a strong opinion, Michael. I, I do, but I'm not <laughs> going to make everybody's mind up for them. This is true. Y you Look, consumers are the ones that, at the end of the day, have to make these decisions. You, it's the, you guys are the... We all are. I'm a consumer, too. Uh, we make decisions on, on what are on shelves and how much they cost and all that stuff. Um, you know, I make no bones about it. It would be a lot easier... To pay the bills at the end of the month, if I sold Coca Cola, I know. And there's a strategy I know there. I, I mean, sell a few how many grocery and stores lay their floors out in a way that they know what consumers are going to buy? Right. I, there's a strategy strategy there too, but right. in some respect, you're saying it conflicts with some of your other philosophies. It, it directly conflicts with them. So, as far as I'm concerned, if I got into a scenario where you know, I had to sell, and I hate to use Coca Cola because it just seems like the most obvious one. You know, um, I don't, I don't think any rep is going to show up at our pick, door and complain. Uh, but I don't mean to pick on on that brand alone. Uh, just any of the, you know, pick your poison in that regard. Um, if if I found myself in a scenario where the only way I was able to keep these doors open was to compromise my values, well then let's just close the doors. We tested the market. We tried it. It didn't work. It's not there. Um, that's that's economics as far as I'm concerned. So. I, I won't go down that road of, um, you know, let's let's put whatever we have to on the shelves to make sure we can pay the electric bill. No, no, no. Let's stick to our laurels and let let's let's stick to our guns and let's make sure that that we're still doing all the things that we wanted to do from day one and not only still doing those things but doing them better. 
that's what's going to carry us into the future. We're going to turn two years old next month. And, and you know what? We haven't had to do any of that stuff. Sell bubble gum or candy bars or cereal or all this stuff that, you know, part of a balanced breakfast. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Are you kidding Let's me right now? What is your part of a balanced breakfast, Michael? Bacon and eggs. Bacon and eggs, Bad my friend. Bacon. And uh, for me, it's often a double egg. Here we go. Not not bacon, but pork belly. Well, here <laughs> I'm glad you said that. I have I've had a unique experience past couple of times. I've had eggs, and Megan witnessed this. Oops, um, double yolk egg. Double yolk egg. That oh is a rare occasion. Boy, has it, it happened two times this week, didn't it, Megan? Yeah. Two times this week. We had a double yolk egg, and it felt like I hit the lottery or something. It was so awesome. <laughs> well, we're, we're 15 feet from the case, Michael. Let's talk mm-hmm. a little bit about navigating the shop. And again, yeah. your layout may be unique to your shop. Sure. But the premise of this me- meat company is going to be the same no matter what state or what city you're in. How do we get around? When I walk through the doors as a first-time customer, yeah. what are some things I should be looking for? Hmm, oh, that's a really good question. See, actually, I gave you the softball earlier, not right, the curveball. Right. What are some things you should be looking for? <sighs> well, I, boy, that's really well, hard. And not, not again. Let's use your your laurels and the foundation of the shop as a basis. Yeah. Okay. As a grass fed, yeah, locally raised, sustainable sourcing mm-hmm. shop. What dictates the case? I have enough trending data you know given that we've been open from day one i mean for two years um that i i have reports and things that can tell me what are surefire items chicken breast i know what's going to happen if i don't have chicken breast people are going to go somewhere else so you know these are the sort of things that really i am at the whim of the consumer uh there's only so much that I can do behind the case in those regards. Um, There's a certain level of, of service component, though, as well. Right. I mean, when we think of dining, whether you're in a restaurant or you're in a, a quick quick sandwich kind of shop. Yeah. There's still standards and service levels that you want to adhere to. Mm-hmm. As a, a person well, in that, standing in that regard. The, the, well, in, in numerous regards, but definitely that regard. I think that plays into the quality, not only the quality of the product you're serving, but the yeah. quality of the experience, right? Well, and we always try to, to follow up the quality of the product with quality experience. And, and you know what? I, I have a handful of employees, and it's very simple to find out which ones are going to stay and which ones are going to go. And it's do you have that instinct of, of customer service? And I mm-hmm. don't think you can teach it. It's pretty simple. Um, be kind. Be generous. And, and the good thing about having somebody like Megan or, or Anthony, whom you'd mentioned, uh, working here, they're young people. But being at the ground level here, they are very – better way to put that. It's easy for them to see how this all comes to be. Um, it's not like Target where they don't know where their paycheck comes from. She knows good and well where Yeah, she's shaking hands from. with the, the guy who's signing the check, and that's Absolutely. You. Well, and also, hey, you know, forget who signs the check. She's she's shaking hands with and being nice to the people that actually fund her paycheck. So, you know, and, and that's not why she does it. That's it, It's genuine. I would but use it plays that. But it plays a part into it. It definitely does. Uh, I would use the word genuine to describe both Megan and Anthony. Uh, definitely genuine people if I thought that it was trite or that they were pretending to be somebody that they're not when they're nice to customers then that's not going to work that's not going to fly because that's not sustainable and I uh, you're you're you and I are going to be vibing for a long time in this show mm-hmm. because I'm, I'm thinking the same thing when we talk when we talk about the generosity and the kindness of the employees mm-hmm. tying it back to the educational component that we referenced in the last segment Knowing that customers are going to walk through the door, yep. with maybe not the proper guidance, maybe not the education that they need, or not understanding the goals of the Ventura Meat Company or yeah. the butcher shop that's supplying this quality product, you have to be generous with your time. You have to be kind with your approach and guide them through what they're seeing. They're not yep. going to have any reference. None whatsoever. Um, I think that is one of the things that makes you know shopping at a small business worth the while is 
the familiarity of it all. Um, and again, that's a universal trait that we should be looking for in right. any, not only any small business, but it definitely a meat shop that we're going into that's supplying nutrient. Come and on. And this is food. Satiability. Way to important. Day. You know, you, you, who do you trust? Like it comes back to the way that I buy beef and things. I like to look somebody in the eye. I like to shake somebody's hand and, and that's much easier to do in a, in a setting like this. I can tell you right now without, um, without, the staff that I have and the trust that I can have for them, the trust that I have in them, um, I would never be able to leave here. Uh, and, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, but you know, there's times that I've got to go somewhere and do something. And I can tell you the only reason that I ever feel good about doing that is because I know the customers are being taken care of, man, what a, what a, um, through the looking glass kind of scenario. It's definitely something to hang your hat on too. Cause like you're, conveying you can't be here 100 percent of the time when the lights are on you've got to trust the staff that are conveying the continual message that you would be supplying if you were standing behind the case if i didn't think the customers would be taken care of i would never leave <laughs> oh you'd have a little cot in the corner <laughs> right <laughs> are you saying i don't have a cot in the corner well we haven't got the camera on it no, but I, there's no, no shower either so we have to let people believe the fact no. that eventually you go home and clean up i do absolutely and uh, you know that's that's one of the interesting things about about doing this and uh, you know passion we hear it all the time about you know small businesses and small business owners and things like that y you know i i wouldn't be on fire for this if i had a bookstore or you know not that there's anything wrong with having a bookstore yeah, I mean, a lot of people fantastic. are passionate about reading and taking themselves into totally the world right. your passion is with meat quality nutrition and great flavor gosh yeah who what as an eater yeah a, a self-proclaimed foodie and eater. That's Who first, wouldn't second, third, love those home things? base. That's that's the grand slam of it all. Um, I, well, I, my, and a good brew. Well, yes, absolutely. To wash it all down with. Here we go. That's it, man. I, I I don't I don't just think of quality in terms of the meat that we sell. I think of it in terms of the experience on the whole. So when we talk about like, what are some things that are unique about this place? in turn you know or in contrast to what you get at the grocery store well where do you want to start you know, i mean it, it it's top to bottom a better experience um these guys they know as much as they can possibly have learned in the in the amount of time they've worked here you're not going to get a better experience anywhere else when you're trying to buy a cut of meat and the good news is when you take it home the follow through is there. Uh, it's it's going to be a lot better than anything you you get anywhere else. No bones about it. And you're offering some additional service that people wouldn't expect. They can ask a customer can ask about cooking techniques or seasoning and presentation Absolutely. from anyone behind the case that will mm -hmm. have an opinion. It's not the only way to do it, but it is a right. a rooted perspective in how to cook the meat deliver the meat and enjoy it with friends, right? That's a great way to put it, that it, it, it's all about, um, you know, preference in a lot of ways. You know, people ask, well, how do you cook ribs? Well, <laughs> what do you want them to take? What do you want to happen? Dry rub versus wet. You know, at the end of the day, you got to cook them for a little while. Um, but some people like to pick up the bone and have it fall to pieces. Some people like to have to do a little work. And you can smoke it, you can right. bake it. But we're able to, to talk you through any of that. And, and I almost feel like, you know, if somebody said, well, what do I do with this? And we kind of shrugged our shoulders. How dare we open a butcher shop? I always say things like, nobody makes you do that. Nobody made me. How many me. times have you gone into a grocery store and asked the person behind the case, hey, uh, what, what do I do with this uh, sirloin? And they're like, never. Eh. I've never done that. Like, hey, I, I got some more pre-packaged box of course and that, to put but, out. That's, that, but there's nothing wrong with that it's just a different style but that's not what is sorry that's not what the grocery store is selling <laughs> that, where's where's our button guy on the, right that's it. not what they're <laughs> selling right they, they they're they're selling quantity and and quantity and quality especially in terms of um meat which is animal flesh they are conflicting ideologies. So we, if we're going to take an approach of quality from the way that we source meat, the way, that, the way that we sell meat has to be quality as well. And if it's not, then close the doors. We're done here. You, you, can't, 
you can't pick and choose when you're when you're trying to do a quality commodity the service has to be quality as well and um the the beauty about it the silver lining about it is it's not hard it's not hard to just talk to people and be nice to people and you know be grateful that you know it doesn't matter if you come in here and buy a quarter pound of ground turkey we're equally as grateful as anybody that comes in and buys you know their week's worth of meat or maybe they buy all their meat here i don't really operate under that premise uh we're, we're grateful for anybody that walks through the doors and um I sure hope that we show it. So latching on to that, talking to people and that gratefulness, before we go to our next break, give us a few key things that a customer can either ask or you know, some words that they can implement into their vocabulary that helps them with the comfort level of the case mm-hmm. or asking good questions at the, okay. of the butcher. Boy, I think one thing that really catches people off guard since they're um, not maybe – Every th- meat's always sold by the pound, right? Always. Uh, the grocery store is adept at, at breaking that price down for you on the sticker and saying, well, this package is going to cost you blank dollars. Okay. That's not what you get here. Um, everything is sold by the pound. And, I, you know, I said to Curtis before we were starting, that's always been the case. Meat has been sold by the pound forever. I mean, it's, it's just always been that way. Um, we don't have prepackaged things here. Uh, it, it is an accommodation thing. We can be more accommodating by not prepackaging things. You know, we cut pork chops to order. That way we can give them to you as thick or thin as you like or, or you know, maybe you want to treat it as a roast. So right out of the gate, I think people see a big, you know, a center cut pork loin that's got 10 bones in it. And they're like, oh, my gosh, do I have to buy that whole thing or does that – does that 809 mean that that whole thing is eight dollars and nine cents and well no absolutely not absolutely that's not. not what it means so everything is priced per pound um and and i have to tell you there's been a few instances where that has caught people off guard that's okay that's okay we've all been uh sort of trained by the grocery store to just look at a sticker on a package and go that's how much it's going to cost me before taxes of course but that's not what we do here. Um, it is, it is, you are the boss. You are the doctor. If you want a you know, three-quarter inch pork chop or you want an inch and a half pork chop or ribeye or you know, a chuck roast, if you want three pounds of chuck roast, it's much easier for us to accommodate a, a, a wide array of customers by leaving that cut whole and then, and then cutting off what you want. And, and we it minimizes can, your waste as well, well exactly. which affects the, the sticker shock or the cost per pound that we were just talking sure about does. anyway. Absolutely. Nobody knows better than I do the poison that is buyer's remorse. Uh, it, it's, it's very terrible. We've all experienced it. And I, I feel like that's something that is, uh, is a lot more possible in a setting like this where, you know, you don't really know unless you're a really savvy shopper, uh, what, what's going to be the price at the, at the, you know, at the register when I buy that, that three quarter inch ribeye or I buy a pound and a half of ground beef and I start to, all these things accumulate, I'm happy to report that on the whole, uh, most people, they, they just, they know exactly what they're about to pay. There've been some exceptions. And, and to be honest with you, I, I, that's not an indictment of that customer individual. It's more just an indictment of, of where we've gotten in this big box, uh, realm that we're in in terms of buying any commodity televisions steaks tennis shoes it, it, the the commodity actually becomes irrelevant that's probably the most unique thing about about this place is it's sold by the pound but we can make it any size you want okay. um you don't have to buy there you can buy a slice of bacon if you want it's it's fine so ultimately i think one of the things maybe we can take away then from this segment is whether you're a new customer or a returning customer mm-hmm. Having an idea in your mind of what you're trying to accomplish with your meal or what your end goal is with a particular style of meat. It doesn't yes. have to be a portion cut. It can't. Yeah. Maybe it's not even knowing that you want a T-bone, but you want a steak, a generic right. type of steak. And how many people are you serving? You know, one of the parameters of your meal will yeah. get you a long way in the shop. It definitely will. Um, but we can help all approaches. Uh, we, we know how to help somebody 
who just what do you recommend and and there's a way to approach that question and it's are you looking to grill are you looking to use the oven are you looking to use the crock pot so cooking technique or cooking style is how you start to whittle away okay what it is they're looking for um and sometimes they don't know then the next set of questions becomes well how many people are you trying to feed how much time do you have and then we can start to narrow it down to what it is they're comfortable with. And you know what? Let's face it. Some people don't want to eat red meat. All right. Well, then we have chicken. We have turkey. We have a few other things that we can offer. Uh, so, so we know how to help anybody. It doesn't matter um, really what your comfort level or what your understanding of meat is. I mean, we've, <laughs> we've been able to help anybody of any understanding level and i understand now better than i did when we first opened the um i hate to use the word discomfort but i can't think of a better word the discomfort that comes with coming in here for the first time and and never having dealt with a butcher i mean we've had people say flat out i don't know how to do this and at first you're like well wait a second you know what do you mean you don't oh that, that's actually really understandable. Yeah, because they're used to going to a, a case that has pre-wrapped cellophane trays yeah. of a portion cut, and they grab it and they go. That's it. And then, you know what? We, you know, it's very easy to look at consumers and go, oh, how do you not know how to buy? Come on. It's from a we've privileged, all, we've that, all that's a privileged been, perspective. It, it really is. And, and we live in this, um, this realm of, uh, you know, the grocery store offering anything and everything. And I hate to pick on grocery stores. It's, it's the... It's the electronic. But there, are, there aren't stores. too many other places where we purchase food from these days. Is but it? I think that, I think at the end of the day, you know, what we're talking about here is actually commodity irrelevant. It's a it's a mentality that's been bred into us, and uh, the big box store is to blame. And it is it is the um, the lie that is the low price. Sure. And it's an instant gratification thing. And I'm here to tell everybody, low prices only serve you in the short term. And, and we're getting ready to, to wrap up for another break and to kind of put a bow on this segment. Before we do that, though, there's one other item I want to ask about, and that's when a customer walks in the door mm. who is semi-educated or even yeah. really educated and knows yeah. exactly what they want, but you don't have it in the case. Yeah. How do you handle a custom order or a, a wild game kind of focus? Delicately. <laughs> no, uh, and there you have it, folks. That's the end of the segment. <laughs> delicately, no, but seriously, I mean that's that's part of understanding how to navigate sure. the shop and communicate with the butcher, right? Yeah, it it is, and and we've had to get into this a lot recently because we've we've almost completely stopped stocking uh, game meats. Nobody's more disappointed about it than I am. But what can I say? The market's not there. And that doesn't mean you can't get it, though, right? It doesn't so mean I can't get it. One of the things it. that people should keep in the back of their mind is if there is something specific, ask. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we're, we're getting to a threshold with some of those items where, um, you know, our minimum buy and, and what people are willing to buy are starkly different. And with a perishable commodity, it's even more prevalent. You know, if these were sneakers... And they could sit on the shelf for six months. Eh, you know, I wouldn't mind. But it's a perishable item. When it's perishable, and, and I don't know how long it's going to take me to sell something like, you know, uh, venison stew meat. Um, it's really hard for me to justify putting that out in the case. Again, the case almost becomes a, a real estate type of scenario where we, ha we have to put things in the case that we know are going to sell. This is a business. We have to treat it as such. And as something that I'm learning as a as a business owner and, and believe me this is the first time I've ever done anything like this I've never owned a business I've been an entrepreneur for going on two years and that's about it so what I'm learning is um, I can't be everything to everybody sure and I want to I really do I want to but it doesn't I, make dollars it doesn't make sense it, it, thank you and, and I want to you know every question that somebody had do you have blank gosh, I really would love for that answer to be yes every single time, but it's not always feasible. It's just not. So we're, we're not going to win that battle every single time. Uh, but, but I think that I'm good enough at it now. Megan's good, good enough at it. Anthony's good enough to, to sort of elaborate and say, we understand what you're looking for. 
you know, and unfortunately, sometimes we have to enter into the realm of supply and demand. And I think most people understand supply and demand, but it's even more prevalent when you get into a perishable commodity. Supply and demand has even more gravity. Sure. And that's where we're at with that. Excellent. So I think for this segment, then, just a couple key points. Yeah. If you're coming into a butcher shop for the first time or the 20th time or the don't be afraid. 100th time, don't be afraid. Come in with a little bit of a plan. Yes. Know what your goals are. You may not know what kind of meat. You may not know what style of cooking, but come in. What what type of event you're holding? Mm-hmm. How many people you're feeding? Also, don't be afraid to ask the question. Oh, no. If it's not in the case, you don't see it. That doesn't mean it's not there. Yeah, we got big fridges back we there. We got big fridges. And, um, again, come in and treat the butcher shop like a, a place of almost like a, a safe haven. Absolutely. In my opinion. Treat it like a place where you can trust the person behind the counter to give you their best perspective and their best opinion on what they're serving. And uh, hopefully, especially in this case of the Ventura Meat Company, yeah. give you the best quality that they'd be serving to themselves. Yes. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, I didn't build this place for myself because that's not a very good business model now, is it? <laughs> Excellent. And we're going to close on that. We're going to take a break and we're going to come back with our next segment where I want to know a little bit more about some of the unique and specific items we can find in the case. And we're going to probably get into a, a few topics about the market that we've been alluding to and what drives the market, what we're seeing in trends right now. I love it. You've been listening to From the Butcher's Block right here at the Ventura Meat Company in Ventura County. This is Michael Buckley, owner-operator of the shop next to me, and I'm Jason Hendrick, the Hungry Man from Everybody's Hungry. We'll be back in a few minutes.